Greetings and welcome to a new video about a steady state error problem. In this video, we will discuss specifically two feedback loops. So we have the multiple feedback. One of them is the velocity feedback. Another one is the position feedback. And that is, of course, a different problem than we have encountered in the previous videos about steady state error. As always, we will look at the calculations step by step and verify these calculations in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our problem. The following situation is given. We have the position feedback or position control system. It can be a position control using a servo motor for maybe a radar. In this case, a plant transfer function is given here. This is the plant transfer function and also the velocity feedback is given and the transfer function of that is also given. In this case, H is the sensor it's shown here and that is the uh, velocity feedback and this wire is just the position fed back to the summation pod directly, which is the position feedback. You can see here from this expression of the sensor that this is a K times S, which is a pure differentiator with a gain of value of K. And the plant is a second order system with a zero at minus two and two poles at the origin. Now what we want is the following, calculate the value of this K, which is then the sensor gain. If the steady state error is two for unit ramp input at the reference. So that is the problem for this example. So we need the value of K. Okay, let's look at the solutions step by step. Again, since we have here not a unity gain feedback configuration, but it's close. We have the G and the H and there is a unity gain feedback already here, but we need to reduce this part to one transfer function. Yeah, and we have discussed this in the previous videos. In order to calculate or use the formulas for the steady state error, we need a unity gain feedback configuration. It is there, but we need to simplify these two blocks. So I just call them P and using Mason's gain rule or Mason's rule for the inner feedback loop, we get the following transfer function. I call it just P. That is then the forward path over one plus the loop, which is then the G times H. Only that part given here in green. That's actually shown here. Now, if I now substitute everything I have from this example, I have this given here in red for the plant and blue for my sensor H. Then I have after simplification, this transfer function, which is again a second order. So PS is trans this expression. Now for the unit ramp reference input, I need this. We have the following. This is the KV, which is the velocity error constant or for a velocity static error constant given by this, which is the limit as approaching zero for S times the loop transfer function. In this case, the loop transfer function is then P times one. It means then also P. So the L is equal to P. So if we now substitute the P, the expression for P here in this for limit expression, we get limit s approaching zero s times our p so we can now divide s in the numerator and the denominator because this s is actually in the numerator so this s will be divided by this s which is one of the terms and also the square we will lose here so what you get is actually this so in, in simplifying form this you actually need to do this before you evaluate the final form now we can substitute the s equals zero so i get the zero here zero here and a zero there. So actually we get then 50 times two over zero plus 50 times two K, which is actually shown here. So it means actually 100 over 100 K, which is just one over K. That's actually the expression. Then we have the following, the velocity error, which is of course due to that ramp input is one over KV, which is then the velocity error constant. This is then one over K. So that means one over one over K is just K. So that means your velocity error, error will be equal to K, which is interesting. Now that means actually the following, in order to have two, which is then given in this problem, my value of K for my sensor must be also two. So if this is 15, that will be 15. So this is actually a very simple expression. All right, that is then for this uh, situation. What you also can see, here, the state state value of the output will be then this. The output will be then the reference minus this 
error and the reference is of course the unit ramp input with a slope of one and if that is two that means this expression must be then our output so if mine r for example has a value at some specific time uh, let's say 20 then it will be 20 minus 2 will be then 18 for my value of y which is an output signal we will see that shortly in the simulation results what we also have for a conclusion here is very interesting the ramp error is actually not zero here even though we have two poles at the origin we have of course discussed in the the video about the general introduction the brief and actually also some detailed explanation about the steady state errors that we have a type 2 system when we have two pure integrates at the origin this is the case but still we don't have a error or ramp error is zero so the ramp error must be zero for type 2 system but in total here this system is not a type 2 but a type 1 system and that's why actually what we have here still some error that will be also um, the case for the ramp input so it's really important to also consider the actual loop transfer function and don't look at this um, let's say the poles at origin so this is an interesting conclusion here now look at the simulation results so first we start with a closed loop response to unit step referencing why we do that we will not have to check also the stability of the system that is of course mandatory to able to calculate the steady state error so if your system is not stable you will actually not have any uh, value in valid information about your steady state error so there is no steady state error information at all so this is the let's say the transfer function complete close to transfer function including the outer loop and that transfer function has now unit step response you will see that is indeed stable so it approaches the final value it has some values also for the set length and also the rise time so i just collect them all for this case you see the over to zero the rise time and the setting time also given the final value is one that means there is no error for unit step input of course we were not interested in the step response we were interested in the unit ramp reference input but this is of course important to check the stability so the system is definitely stable now let's then check the actual uh, problem that which is actually the unit ramp reference input this is then the unit ramp reference input you can see the orange line here which is the linear increasing line and the blue line is actually the response now what you get here is the following you actually have for example at four seconds here the the ramp input is also four and it's also uh, the same for let's say for eight seconds it is eight it's actually the formula for the ramp input in time domain which is just r is equal to t so it's actually for each value for t you will get exact same amplitude but if you look at your response for your system that is actually at four seconds is 2.27 so it is now larger than two because this difference is larger than two so uh, i mean smaller than two so how can we then check and conclude an accurate result from this plot you need to actually check in a later stage so let's also that's actually why i'm labeled a couple of uh, points here so let's say at eight seconds i see also at the same time is 6.03 which is closer than two so this part is still not exactly two it is a 1.97 going to the eight actually as an amplitude but if you uh, wait a little bit longer so it's actually the steady state condition at 12 seconds will be 12 for also the amplitude and then we have an amplitude at the same time for my response of 10 so this difference is indeed 2 and that is actually also the calculation we made so this is then 12 point minus 10 is 2 and we had calculated that it was indeed the case so we need to have a error of 2 and the value of k we have calculated was actually two so that will also give you an error of two in your unit ramp response all right it was a fair example about the steady state error problem using multiple feedback configuration here using the velocity and also the position feedback velocity feedback is also called the rate feedback is another way name if you have any questions about this example Please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. I see you next time in another interesting video about another 
uh, topic share and like this video so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time take care